Hello my friends, my name is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and welcome to a beginner's guide for Mountain Blade to Bannerlord. This video will be aimed towards people who have never played any of the Mountain Blade games before, um, or people who have perhaps played some of the older ones, but have just bought this game and just want to know what some of the basic features are. And this video will help you get started in your campaign as well. So what we're going to do, jump straight into the campaign. And the first screen that you're greeted with is your culture screen. So there's six cultures in uh, Bannerlord. Uh, nearly said Warband there. Eh? Oopsie. So we've got the Valandians, the Sturgeons, Empire, Batanians, Kazate, and Azurai. Basically, look at these cultures as different abilities and different boosts that you get at the start. For example, the Valandians, you've got a little bit of a backstory about here about who they are. But this is the most important part right here. 20% more upgrade experience to troops from battle. Basically means your troops will upgrade quicker. Sturgeons, which is in the north, which is where the, the sort of Viking tribes are. 20% less speed penalty from snow. So good if you're fighting in the north of the map. The Empire have 20% construction speed bonus to town projects, war repairs, and siege engines. The Azurai have caravans, which are 30% cheaper to build and 10% less trade. If you want to be a trader, this will be a pretty good thing to go for. The Kazates have 10% extra speed bonus for horsemen on the campaign map. And finally, the Batanians have forests, which give 10% less speed penalties to parties. If I had to pick three, which I think are really good, it's probably the Batanians, because they're going to be fighting in forests quite a lot of the time. Uh, probably the Empire for your construction speed when you're doing sieges and stuff like that, and the Valandians. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to pick the Valandians. I would recommend this over the others. Um, early game when you're trying to build a strong army this is going to help you over quite a bit so I would recommend going for that and this is the character creation screen so you can pretty much do whatever you want you can have male and female with the voice so that's the what the first voice and that's the second voice Just, there are a few voices on here there's three in total for the male and there's two on there for the for the female I'm actually gonna go with the female because I've I've always gone with males um, different skin colors, so pretty self-explanatory. You can go wherever you want to. Your pitch is important as well. So, for example, I go down here. And if I put the pitch right up, it goes a much higher pitch. So you can change the pitch. Also, the height. Now, important thing with the height here, the smaller you are, the harder you will be to um, to hit on the, on the battlefield because you're going to have less of a hitbox. However, I think, personally, you might be a little bit slower Whereas if you're a much bigger person, you've got longer legs. Um, this is a theory more than anything, but it's worth testing out maybe. But height, you know, up to you, whatever you want to go with. I'm just going to leave it more or less like that. You can also randomize and randomize all as well. So you can go for whatever you want to just go through until you get something which you're happy enough with. That'll do. And obviously your, your face, you can take, change your skin type. You can change your, your face height and depth and, and all the stuff like that. Same with your eyes as well. Uh, if you want to do your eye colour, all the way down here is blue. The further up to the right it goes, it goes like a grey and a green, and then down to like a brown. I'm going to have a blue like my eye colour. And you can just change and play around with these as you want to as well. Same with the nose and nostril, you can do whatever you want. And then you can have teeth type as well, which is a little bit scary. I'll put on one. You can change like the lip thickness. And you can spend as much time as you want to playing around, moving things around by here. I don't think I need to go through all of this, but you get the idea. And then finally, we have the hair by here. Uh, that hair looks pretty good. You can, you know, if you, you can go for whatever you want to. You have more of like a Viking kind of braided hairstyle, but there, go for a, a lot longer hairstyle. You know, you can have stuff like that. The male and females do have different hairstyles, but these are what some of the female ones are in the game. Uh, that looks alright. We'll go with that. I'll keep the hair blonde. And then markings. You can put markings. You can have face markings. You can go face paint like that. And there's also other stuff then, like uh, you can have scarring. Quite cool when the scarring goes through the eye. The eye actually goes blind. That's quite nice if you want to create a character with a bit of a funny backstory. You can put something on the eyebrow. I can have the one on the eyebrow. I think that looks quite nice. And we're pretty much done. And then you can change clothing as well. You can zoom out with the mouse wheel. So in and out with the mouse wheel. And then if you click the left click button and move around, you can see what the character would look like. So that's basically the character creation in a nutshell. So we'll move on. Click next. And this is the very important part of your early game campaign. On the left-hand side, you'll see there are a bunch of different attributes by here. We've got Vigor, Control, Endurance, Cunning, Social, and Intelligence, okay? And basically, how this works is when you're in a campaign, you'll have different things that you can master. For example, if you're using a one-handed sword, 
the more you use the one-handed sword, the more that's going to go up. You have a learning rate. You can do things with uh, like perk points and skill points to upgrade your learning speed quicker. So the more you use the one-handed sword, if I've got, say, four bars in here, then I will be more proficient with that at a much faster rate than if I had nothing in there at all. I'll go into more depth when we get into the campaign, because I can show you the other screen then. But for this, I'm going to just go through what I would recommend at the start for a decent start in the campaign. So basically, you have different things here. You're born into a family of, and it gives you a list of different things you could be born into. Each one will give you some attributes. For example, you'll see now, for a Baron's Retainers, I would get uh, 10 skill level and 1 focus point to ride in, and polearm 1 to uh, to social as well. So... Um, different things it gives you here so my social's gone up by here by one and then my riding's went up by one and my pole arm is up by one but what you need to kind of think of when you create your character early on if you want to try and be as proficient as possible for example i'm thinking about having somebody with a little bit of endurance so i can be fairly quick on the battlefield have some decent riding and have some decent bow with possibly a one-handed ability as well so they're like the four things i'm thinking of early game other stuff then, like scouting tactics, uh, you know, roguery, leadership, they'll come with time possibly over the campaign. And don't be afraid to, you know, whatever you've got, if you're role-playing by here, um, you, you know, you can have like one in all three of these if you want to and have one in all of them and, you know, be a bit of an all-rounder, I suppose. You won't be particularly great at everything, but you will have a little bit of knowledge in each field. That's fine as well because you can, you know, you can upgrade anything throughout the campaign. But I'm just trying to do this as a, an efficient kind of uh, start and it's something that's going to help you early game. Uh, so we can have um, Yeaman by here, which is good for the crossbow and the polearm. We've got the two-handed and the smithing. Hunters is good for the crossbow and a bit of scouting. And then mercenaries is good for roguery and crossbow. I think, though, we are probably going to go with a bit of trade and a bit of charm to begin with. Plus our intelligence goes up as well. So we're going to go with that. So choose your early childhood. So it gives you a little, little kind of generated character that of yourself as a as a child. So my leadership skills could go up by here perhaps, or brawn, attention to detail. So attention to detail is pretty good because your endurance, your athletics goes up, and your control goes up by one, which is going to help your bow, and then your one hand is going to go up. So that's one I possibly think about getting now. As a matter of fact, that's what we're going to get. Attention to detail. Choose your adolescence at the town's watch training ground. And we've got two-handed, we've got by there. I'm looking to get something with a bow and a horse. Let's go through them. That's going to give me horse, it's going to give me Stuart as well, uh, which is going to be quite good when you administer towns. That's more of a late game kind of thing, when, when you've got your own your own kind of faction and everything. Um, training ground is good for crossbow. That's going to be good for one-handed and roguery. If you want to be a bit of a rogue and, and do some nasty things in the campaign, then that's a possibility. But I think caring for horses is good because it will give me the intelligence and it will also give me a bit of riding as well. So then in Warton Calradia, what do we do with my youth? So again, you go through. I can get my bow and my riding up on this one. So it's going to be riding with the scouts. Choose your young adulthood. So we could defeat an enemy in battle. It would give me one in two-handed, but I would get my one-handed up as well. I could lead a caravan. I could invest money, which would be good for smithing and, and for trading. Surviving a siege is good for a crossbow and also the actual bow. I had a famous escapade. Oh, I treat people well. I'm thinking we go into survive a siege. That's going to give us a bit more bow proficiency. And we are going to be using the bow quite a bit early game. Choose your story background. So then, again, I, I, I could subdue a raider. That's going to give me endurance and athletics as well. I think that's a good one to go on. And then that's basically it. So how I've ended this, I'm decent enough at one-handed weaponry. I'm decent enough with a bow. I got a little bit of skill with a crossbow. I'm decent enough at riding. I'm decent enough at athletics. So I'm, I'm fairly good all around to begin with anyway, like that. And then I've also got four control, four endurance. So these are two important things early on as well, with my vigor being three. My intelligence has also gained one as well. I haven't got anything in cunning at all. So that's the only thing where I've let myself down. But of course, you can build that up throughout the campaign. And it tells you a little bit of a breakdown on the right-hand side then of what you have actually done. This will all make more sense when we get onto the campaign itself. Uh, I'm going to create a name as well. You can put your first name in here. So um, I'm just going to call her uh, Anna. Yeah, Anna. We'll call her Anna. That'll be fine. Uh, but here, this is important as well. So 
friendly troops receive damage, so um, my troops will, will get reduced damage, or I can put it right up to realistic. Realistic means that they could get one-shotted, perhaps, whereas with a very easy, it can be, you know, a few shots before they, they drop. So something that does, like, 80% damage might only do, like, 45% damage, say, that kind of thing. Um, same with all of these by here. If you want to be really, really hardcore, go for realistic on all of it. I would recommend if it's your very first time playing this as a beginner, just leave it on very easy for the time being and then go from there. Uh, same with map movement as well. All of that is basically how hard the game is going to be. Enable death. So again, your character can permadie in this game now and you, you can, your character can also marry and have children. And basically, if you have children and you die, then you will take control of another family member or your child, you know, that sort of thing. But leave that off for your first campaign and also auto-allocate clan member perks. I would definitely not put that on because you're going to want to be managing the perks of your family members yourself. So I would leave that off like that and we'll start the game. So once you've done that, you come into this screen by here. It's a guy who is your brother and he gives you a little bit of a story by here. I'm not going to read the story. I'm going to let you all experience that yourself. But basically... What's happened is your brother and sister have been captured and you want to go and try and find them and save them basically um, And he's basically telling you we you need to do that So if you want to skip the tutorial you can you pick this option by here But if you want to do the tutorial which I would recommend I would go on to the course by here So we're going to go do the tutorial quickly and You can see in the top left hand side mounted training, range training, melee training, advanced melee training these are all different things you can do. It gives you some tips on the right-hand side as well. WASD, obviously, to move around. Enter a training area. So you can see this one's got a horse on it. So we're going to go straight for the horse right here. We're going to go along by here. We're going to pick up it's an archery set by here. We're going to jump on the horse with F. And then we're going to go right along. And as we're marching along, we've got to try and shoot the target. You hold on left to shoot them. Horseback shooting is quite difficult. So I'm holding on the left mouse button to shoot. Once it goes black or once it goes dark, it means I've hit the target. But you can see it is quite difficult. You've got to try and do it as quickly as you can. As you can see, I'm not very good at it. It's the sort of thing which comes with practice. But you get the gist of this. And what I'll do, I'll move ahead now to the next section. Okay, so next up we have sword fighting. So it's going to go through here. And you'll see there's a couple of guys sparring in here. Do you want to, want to do? You want to pick up a shield with the F button and a sword. You jump in, fight with the trainer. So right mouse button is to shield. That's how you get your shield up. Also press the R button if you want to go first person. You might find this easier. Left is to swing. You see the little arrows pointing left and right. So if I got the right arrow by here, I'm right. I slash from the right. Like that. From the left. Like that. If it's aimed down, I'm going for more of a stab. If it's up, I'm going for an overhead. So there's four different move directions you can go with. Obviously combine them as quickly as you can. And then shield and block when you have to. So defend from the left. There we go, defend from the left, right, up, just point in the direction you need to go in, and that's how you block. And then moment you attack from the left, slash, just like that. And you get the gist of it, and you also want to combine that and be as quick as you can. And that's sort of shield training. Choose another weapon or go to another training area, so you get the gist of it. So by here now we've got the range training, so you've got crossbow, bow training, and javelin. I'm going to start off with the bow. Move over to the marker by here, and what you got to try and do, you got to try and hit the pot. I'm going to go to first person for this, because first person might be a little bit easier. Ooh, to the side of it so I can get that one. And you also try and, try and do them as quick as you can. It is a bit tricky with the bow, and that's why I mean getting a little bit of proficiency early on in ranged combat is probably going to be beneficial. Um, and you'll see that in a sec when we actually get to the stage where we're going to fight more battles and, and looters and stuff because it is a good way to level up quite quickly. There we go. And obviously got a windmill moving by here, so we'll try and shoot th between the between the um, propeller repelled uh, thing of the of the windmill, and that's done. And I've done just under forty seconds. And you move on, then you just go to the next one. So, for example, press F to get the. Javelins, I can stay in first person with the R or come back out like this and just aim with the left mouse button, hold it down and then release. And I shot that one a little bit. I'm going to first person again. It's up to, you, up to you really. With ranged combat, I think first person helps a little bit for me personally, but it's totally up to you, whatever you find easier. Aiming just above slightly with the reticle is probably pretty good. A bit further away 
when it's when it's a bit further away you want to aim a bit higher. So I'm still a little bit under. So about there possibly. Nope. You can see how difficult it actually is. There we go, got that one. It's the sort of thing just comes with practice. The more battles you fight, the better you become. Like anything else in life, I guess. I can't quite get this one at the top though. It's a bit of a tricky one. There we go, got it eventually. Bring it down slightly for this one. Just undershot it, or just overshot it rather. Bang on that time. Yeah, I don't I don't use javelins often, so this isn't really my forte, as you can clearly see. To wait for that to move there, and then got that one. I have to aim slightly up, wait for that to actually go, and release now. Ah, oh, I just missed. But there, got it. Bang on. And that's basically how the tutorials work. There is an advanced melee training as well, but I think you get the gist of that, and we'll actually do some combat in a moment. So once you leave the training area, you hold down the um, the, the tab button, and that gets you out, and it says you're at the training field. So I press leave. I'm actually on to the campaign then. So, because we're doing the tutorial, we are going to be doing a few little quests here. So, it says um, a little quest by here. we got to go and, and get uh, food, basically. So, let's go. Um, and there's a little village by here called Tevea. So, basically, what they want us to do is go to Tevea. And what I'm going to do is explain the map by here now in all of its details so you're, not, so you're aware of everything. First of all, your character is by here. I have the little... It says Anna's party. It's got two. That's me and my brother, basically. If I hold the scroll the mouse wheel all the way out, I go right out, and I can see the world map. You've got all the different factions. You can tell by the different colours. The Vitanians in green, for example. The Viking factions in blue. That sort of thing. But our character's portrait is here, so you can easily see where we are on the map. Scroll back in with the mouse wheel to see where you are. So what we want to do from left to right, we start off with the character. You can press the C button to bring this screen up, and this is the screen I wanted to show you at the start. So you can see by here, we are level 1, and it says that um, next level is at 5, gain a total of 5 skill points level up this character. So SP is skill points, once you get these skill points, you can add that onto the tree. So you can see with the stuff that we picked at the start, so for example if my control and endurance was 4 each, I will be able to upgrade these faster than say something like leadership. My leadership is only a level, a level 5 down by here. Whereas my bow is a level 25. I'm learning my bow rate at a times 8.36. Whereas my leadership I'm learning at 3.27. So I'm going to be growing at a much slower rate through this tree by here than I am with the bow. This is where skilling everything up on the left hand side here is important. And using it on a regular basis as well. For example, there's no point me not using the bow when I'm quite proficient with it. Say, you know, picking a pole arm over that would be a bit silly really. So... Try and use the bow and try and use the one-handed for me and riding, of course, with my horse. You can see that something's shining by here. When you've got a silver shield that says a number by here, that shows you how many perks you can actually pick into the tree. So if we start off with the bow, you'll see that I can pick anything that's below level 25. One thing is below level 25, and that's marksman, which will give me accuracy with a bow by 10%. That's going to help me out, so I can click on that, and I this will light up when you hover over it. Click that. And that's now locked into the tree and it's gone gold. One handed is exactly the same. But this is the catch now. With the bow, I only had one option. Some things you picked, you pick either or. So I can't have both of these. I can only pick one. So for example, I got edge placement, which will give me a damage increase by 4%. Or I can go for extra hit points where my hit points go up by 3%. I'm probably going to use the bow more. So I think having extra hit points will benefit me. But again, this is where you start to tailor your character to how you want to play. So I'm going to pick that and I'm going to go with the extra hit points. Right in, I have a silver shield here. I can only pick one thing here and that's extra hit points for my horse. So I shall pick that. Athletics also has a silver shield. But again, I have a choice of two. So I can either have extra arrows. So your quiver will have plus two arrows when you enter battle on foot. Or extra throwing weapons. As you clearly see, I've got much better bow proficiency than throwing proficiency. So I'm going to go for the extra arrows. But again, it depends on whatever you want to go with. Now you'll see I have one point by here. This is a, a focus point that I can put into my tree by here. So if I want to max out my bow even further, I have a learning rate of 836 if I press the plus button by here, I can actually put that up. I'm now going to learn all of this tree much faster than I did previously because I've now gone up to, to plus 10, uh, point, point one, one eight. Once you're happy with everything you've done the tree, press done and that's then locked in. So that's basically how the tree works from the from when you start the game to when you actually start playing the game. 
So that's on the C button by here, the character screen. Next over we have the inventory, or inventory. Don't have anything here at the moment, but there's two things I want to show you. First of all, battle outfit. This is how you're loaded for battle. Civilian outfit. This is how you're loaded when you go into like towns and stuff. And there are different things you can go on to. You can look at all. You can look at just melee weapons, shields, range, uh, your horses, and, and anything that's miscellaneous, okay? Um, if you want to drag and drop stuff, you can put them from here and into the slot. You have four slots, so I have a bow, I have arrows, and I have a spiked mace. If I get a helmet, I can put that there. If I have a scarf or a cape, that can go there. Your upper body goes here. Your gloves and, and, and gauntlets go there. And your boots go down by here. You then have your horse and your harness around by here then as well. And that's how it's loaded out, okay? We'll get into that in a second when we actually start having some battles. Your party would be here. You press the P button. So it's just me and my brother Nogand at the moment. But any prisoners would be on this screen by here. And more troops would be loaded up by here as well. And quests, you press the Q button, or press the J button, or Q, or J button, or the quest button here, sorry. And you've got your active quests and your old quests. So actively, I'm looking to travel to the village of Tevea to find some provisions, okay? Press done when you're happy. And then you can't go on this screen at the moment because it's locked out for tutorial, or this one can be a kingdom, but we'll go into those at a later date. And then finally, you have, on the left-hand side, you have your money. So I currently have 1,000 dinars. I have no influence at all, I've just started. I have 100% um, health, but you can see by here, my base health is 100, but because of those perks now, I have plus 3. And my my ready troops is 2. I've only got 2 in my party, and no one's wounded. I have no food. That's why I've got to go to this village to get some food, because that's red and it's on 0. And finally, across by here, we have morale. We have a base morale of plus 50, and um, plus 1 personal, because of my influence in my party. But then, because of our food, we're minus 2, so we are slightly suffering. So if we go to Surveyor, left click to move. If you want to move quicker, fast forward button by here. If you want to stop, press the pause button by there. Okay, but we've made it to Surveyor. And what we are going to do, we are going to actually take a walk around and see what we can do. Okay, so our brother's here. He says we need to find food and maybe get some men to come with us as well. So what we need to do is travel around the village, speak to people, talk to the headman, headman Gallon. So, for example, this is good if you're exploring. Left alt, headman gallon, he's up there. So, I am going to go running around aimlessly. I can actually just hold it down. I can see where he is and just march my way up to him. He's up by here somewhere. Just saves a bit of time rather than searching aimlessly around the village. These are all NPCs you can talk to, but we just want to speak to headman gallon, who is right up by here. Press the F to talk to him. So, what brings you here? We need to take out some raiders. And again, quest is pretty self explanatory. And now, because that while that's done, that little tutorial part, it's unlocked what I can do. I can buy food, I can recruit troops. So tell me to buy products, so go onto the option by here. And this is where things start to get a bit more involved now. So this is my money, this is their money. Tevea, the, the village and my party. They want me to buy grain, so I can buy grain. I got a thousand coins in total, uh, and that'll be it. So 60 of them, a bit of grain, and then quest completed by purchasing grain. I've now got to talk to the headman. I can actually go and back and do like what I did just then take a walk around and actually speak to him or what I can do if he appears up here and just click on him click on talk and that's a much faster way to talk to any NPCs rather than searching for them in the village or town so have you finished preparations I'm working on it so nothing else here if you want to exit hold on tab lets you exit any village or town or tavern so recruit some troops click on recruit troops and you can see there's a bunch of troops here they all have a cost they all cost 50 each I can either click individually like so. I cancel by pressing the reset button or I can just click on recruit all and it'll cost me nine, it'll cost me 300 gold for all of them. So there we go. And you'll see my party size has gone up now from uh, up, up to eight out of 23. Because of my skills, I can have up to 23 people in my party. So now I can go and talk to the headman to finish off the quest and we're going to have a battle now. Okay, blah, 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 blah. So click continue. If you want to, you know, read this and stuff when you're playing, but you get the idea. Locate and rescue traveler. So I tab out now. So I've uh, tabbed out and you'll see now I've tabbed out there's three parties by here These are all part of this quest. These are all enemy troops enemy troops people who are gonna be hostile towards you Come up with a red number all of them have six each. They're also part of the mission Anybody that's got a mission for you comes up with the blue exclamation mark So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna click on the first guy by here like so that'll move towards him We now have a battle on our hands. There's six raiders against the eight people in our party. We'll click the attack button and we'll begin the battle. So 
battle tactics are quite interesting. So uh, you can tell your men to charge by opening the movement orders with F1 and choosing charge. So I can press F1. And if I, if I want to, I can move this wherever I want to and say I want to position them there. Ah! Press F1 again. I'm putting all my cavalry to that position. As you can see, they are marching towards us from the bridge over there. Or what I'm going to do, I'm going to let them start to come across. I press F1 again. Press F3. Get the charge. I'm going to start firing upon them in the water as we speak as well. There shouldn't be any match for cavalry. When it's a big cluster, I guess you want to try and shoot. This is where you can get good hit points on them. Try and move away from this guy. They might hurt me. Delivering some damage here. When they're clustered up, that's when you want to try and shoot them. Just a bit more damage again. Horseback fighting, this is why I went for bowmanship at the start. Because it's actually quite handy. Because you're, you're going to be too quick for them to hit you on your horse. You can see I've barely taken any damage at all. Another hit on him. They're sitting ducks, basically. More damage delivered again. When they move, you've got to try to obviously take that into account when you are firing upon people. Bring out your, your mace. Go for some melee action here if you have to as well. But you can clearly see they were no match. Horseback fighting with the, with the bow and arrow is a little bit OP. Once you're happy, with that, to say the battles when press the tab button, it brings up the results screen. That took one minute thirty. We've gained a little bit of renown, a little bit of morale from that, and you can see our army party. So, we had eight in our party. We were the attacker, and we had. I didn't get any kills, but no gun. My brother had one, and the troops had five kills, and it tells you what they had then as well on the other side of the screen. So then rescuing and taking prisoners, tutorial for this. So basically, if you want to take a prisoner, press the transfer button. He's now a prisoner. If you've got more than one, there's like 10 of them or something, press the transfer all other prisoners and it'll take all of them. In this case, only one prisoner. Click done once you're happy. And this is the loot then. So this is quite important. So again, you can individually put things over or you can press the loot all, get it all over in one go. Also, have a look to see what you've got on here. For example, we've got Eastern Wrapped Arm Guards with an arm armor of nine. Well, I got no armor at all, so that's going to make me more, more proficient and with better armor there. My booties are leg armor 16. These are 15. And when you hover over, you can see clearly that these are the new ones that I'm looking at. These are my current ones, and they are actually better, so they're green. So keep that in mind as well. But yeah, anything that, that is a better, you want to just sort of change it. But I think that's all I've got here, which is actually better. So we'll continue with the quest, we'll take out the next two lots of these. What you want to watch out for when you're fighting on a horse as well. When you're running around, you be aware of, of, of trees because you can easily be firing upon somebody, especially in first person like so, and then you, you walk into a tree like this, and it's just going to cause problems. So I'm going to just stick by here, I'm going to click on my, my one Dad! movement, F3, get into charge, and I'm going to just come in from the flank by here. Try and incorporate some tactics. It is quite difficult to slash them off horseback. But now they're a little bit dispersed. I can just start shooting into them. There we go. I got 45 damage on him. Some more damage. Guys are sitting duck. This is what I mean. You've hardly done any damage to me. They only got rocks they can throw. Rocks do like 1% damage. Even though I've been damaged slightly. It's barely anything. I got a kill as well. These battles are quite straightforward, but they would be so much harder if I was fighting on foot. And again, I can just transfer all with the two buttons. Click done once I'm happy. And again, lots of stuff here. Take all, because it's going to be useful, the stuff I can trade. And then finally, we'll go to the raiders up by here. I'm going to fast forward. And the same thing again here. And this is a bit more of a tricky battle situation here. Lots of trees, got to be a bit careful. I'm going to, again, march out of the way slightly. I'm going to come in from the flank. You'll find flanking to be quite a useful scenario. So I'm going to tell my troops to charge with F3 again. And while, I'm, they, while they charge from the front, I'm going to shoot from the side. There we are. Dam did some damage. Big cluster of them. Any big cluster, just shoot into them. There we go. Got, got a kill. Try and work your angles with your bow. and There we go. Big cluster. Shoot. I'm getting hits every time. When you're shooting as well, you can't shoot when it's red, obviously. 
Going to first person first. And look how they're not focused on me so I can just get behind them quite close. Just aim at them. I am missing quite a bit though. I do prefer having a, a, a long sword rather than this. There we go. Got a kill. Took his head off pretty much. Kill him as well. Got a few kills this time. There we go. And I got, you can see I had three kills that time. Pretty happy with that. And of course I'm using my one handed. You can see extra body damage from perks one. You get an experience in the bottom left hand corner every time you're killing people with a weapon. So um, the amount of damage you do. Ooh, I got a nice sword by here. So I can take that sword. I can now use that. And that's me fully equipped with my swords. Loot all that for the money. And then that quest is done. And we have another guy by here who uh, says I'm in my debts. These brigands would have marched us to our death. Blah, blah, blah. He's a doctor by trade. I'm going to let you read this. You know, you can read all this and, and, and play it yourself. But I'm just going through it for the sake of the tutorial. Keep that in mind. Great. Okay. So quest completed. Locate and defeat Traveller. Find the hideout of Radagos's gang. We're going to fight the gang leader now. And what you will clearly see up by here is his hideout. It's now spawned on the map. You basically do this hideout, and that's the last bit of the tutorial part of the of the game. So what we'll do, we'll march up there, and we'll take them out. But before we do that, you'll notice that my health is only 75, because I took a few hits there. So what you can do, you can go to any town or village or city or whatever, and I can go down here. It slowly goes up over time, so 76 now, it's gone up by one. Every sort of few, few kind of minutes in the campaign that you travel, it's going to go up a little bit. But what we want to do... I can go in here. I could wait for some time. It's actually disabled during the tutorial, but in the grand campaign when you are playing properly, uh, you can wait by here, and what that will do, that will allow you to heal up. It will cost a few coins. It'll cost you a few gold, but you can do that as well. What we're going to do, we're going to head, away, head over to the hideout by here and take out the leader. Also, a quick note before we get there. If you hover over stuff like this, you can see that it has five mountain bandits, four raiders, and four raiders again. So that's the amount of people that we're going to be up against. And let's go and attack. I hate this because this is nighttime battles. I really hate nighttime battles. So a quick word of advice when you're doing this hideout. Um, what I've done, I've kept my troops way back. I've gone and taken out a few troops by the by the bow. Because obviously I've, I'm a little bit weaker with, with the hit points and stuff. I've only got like 75% health or so. Um, and then I'll send them in then once we sort of outnumber them and it's in our favour. Once you've done that, you end up fighting the leader by here. You can see balance power is heavily in our favour now because i got more men because I've kept them all alive. So that's why I said it's worth keeping them alive. Now this guy, he basically says about your brother and sister, and um, he's like, I'm the only way you're going you're to find him, blah, blah, blah. And he's basically saying we can fight him one-on-one, -on -one, or we can fight him with our men. One-on-one is going to be difficult. You can clearly see he has chain mail, he has armor and everything. So better off to send your men in. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move backwards slightly, let them take all the aggro, because I'm actually quite weak at the start. And I can jump in and help out then, like so. Just like that. Much easier way of doing this. If you do it with a duel or if you do it with less men, you're not going to win. But I've kept all the men alive so you can see I clearly outnumber the enemy. I just tab out then. And you can clearly see I'm taking no losses. Uh, happy days. So then a little update on the quest. He's saying about um, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you better help us get my brother and sister back. So we head on the road, blah, blah, blah. And then I got a bunch of prisoners. So again, I can take eight prisoners. I now have 14 prisoners. 14 out of 14, a maximum amount. You can clearly see the health bar from me and my companion, which is my brother Nogand. And I've got my troops by here. If your troops are able to be leveled up, there'll be a little icon that pops up by here. For the sake of the tutorial, you can't do it, but in the actual campaign, you'll be able to. And if you want to move people around, you can just click on them and drag them up. So if you want to have my, my brother at the top by here, for example, I can do that as well. So it says now you come across a chest with an old piece of bronze in it, spat and corroded, that it could have been anything from a cup to a crown. And it gives you the option to create, create your family name, basically. This will be your, what your clan name is. So, for example, if you think of it like Game of Thrones, if you ever watched Game of Thrones, you have house names. So, like House Targaryen, House Stark, that sort of thing. So, you can do that kind of thing in this if you wanted to. So, th just think of like a surname or a family name. Uh, I'm going to call it Tutorial, because that's what we, we're called. It's going to be called Anna Tutorial. <laughs> there we go. So, we are House Tutorial of the YouTube clan. And then it gives us a nice little... Um, chance to create a banner is a little bit limited of what you can do I can move in and out with the, the scroll of a mouse wheel and I can press the left button to move my character around so first of all the size if I bring it all the way down 
the the item is um, small. The image is small on on the flag and also the shield. If I put it right up, it takes over the shield. Uh, bigger is usually better, I suppose. So just keep it big or, or that kind of size if you want to, just sort of see what it looks like on a shield as well. You have options. You can have different types of eagles and animals on here. You've got like the raven for if you want to do like a Viking sort of thing. Uh, you've got stuff that looks quite Roman looking, for example, that's very Roman, golden kind of standard. If you want to do like a Roman kind of playthrough, or like different kinds of eagles and horses. Um, I quite like the lion. I'm going to go with the rampant lion, I think. Um, so I'm going to go with that. But there's loads of different options you can go through by here. Okay, guys. I'm going to go with the rampant lion. And then I can choose my background colour. So I'm given a choice between the colour that's on now. A black, a red, a, a pink colour. A blue or a green. I'm gonna go with the blue for the sake of this. I think gold looks quite nice. A golden lion on a blue field. But you could, uh, I could make it a bit, bit darker. Go white, pink, and go for a blue. Have a blue on blue, like a light blue and a dark blue, if I so wanted. But I think the the gold and the blue will, will look fine for me. And it's quite nice on the shield as well. So once I'm happy, you click done. And then that's basically the tutorial in a nutshell. It says um, the tour is over. You're free to explore. And we now got free play. So it doesn't take long to do the tutorial. It's worth going through it just to get used to the game and, and all the different things you can do within the game. But we, we, if you go back to, say, for example, your inventory now, you'll see we have nothing to bar the grain that we, we purchased. And our party, we have nothing in our party. All of those troops and stuff is for the sake of the tutorial. So you're actually on your own now starting off, which is obviously quite, <laughs> quite intimidating early on. But what you want to be doing is looking for looters early on. Okay, so if you go back down to Tevea, we have a thousand coins. There's five looters about here, and you'll see what I mean now. Okay, so I'm going to take on the five looters. You might think this is a bit crazy because I'm one and that's five, but this is where you can farm XP. And I'm going to do a video on the channel to show you how you can get XP quite quickly early on in the game. But this is just a quick example of it. So I'm going to go against these five looters here. Looters, which you've already seen in this game are not that strong. They have stones, they have small knives, that's about it. I'm going to attack these looters on horseback and you'll see how I'll be able to fight this battle. It is in the dark, so I have got to be a bit careful. But it's five of them, I have 27 arrows, I just got to try and make them count. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ride to the side and I'm just going to keep shooting into them. Get them so it's a big cluster of them and fire. Try not to waste any arrows, i wasted a couple already, so I'll be careful. And be aware of the trees as well. Slow down a little bit, perhaps let them catch up. Get a couple of shots off. There we are, this guy's probably gonna die if I can shoot him. Missed again. There we are, he's gone. And this is just an easy way to farm XP early on. There we go, another, another damage to him. Another dead dude, I've got three left. And you can see, this is what you gotta be careful of. I walked into a rock, so be aware of your surroundings as well. That's a good example of it right there. Watch out for trees, watch out for rocks. And you can see, because my, my aim is a little bit off, because my skill isn't all the way up. I've only got a, a skill of level of, of 2 or 3, whatever it was. And my proficiency was 25, I think, so it's going to be a bit weaker. There we go. I've gained the level because of that. I got seven arrows left. So just use up all your arrows. Obviously, the more you use the bow, the better. You'll see that I'm getting experience by doing this. And I've hardly taken any damage. They have hit me a couple of times with the rocks. But like I said earlier, rocks do 1% damage. Whereas I'm doing like 39 damage off an arrow over there. And I've killed him with, with another arrow. I had two arrows left. I killed all five. And you'll see on the left-hand side the damage, the distance, the missile speed, extra damage from perks too, and I've gained skill in riding and bow work. So by doing more of them, by grinding battles out like that early on, I'm getting morale plus one and my renown's plus one, which is really good. Now the thing is with renown, if I fought that battle with, say, ten men, I'd only be getting like 0 0.2 renown. So I'm getting a lot more renown by fighting it on my own as well. If you fight battles where you're outnumbered, you get more experience. I've gained a prisoner from that, which is great. I've leveled up, which is even better. I've gained some stuff here. So, for example, I haven't got a hood, so I'm going to use that. I now got a three armor. Hover over it to see what armor it is. So it's a tier one armor, and it gives me three head armor. Same with anything by here. If it's better than what I've got, put it on. Uh, and in this case, none of this is better than what I've got, but I'm going to take it all anyway. 
for the sake of looting. Okay. Um, what I can do, I can go to Tavea. And I can recruit troops. I can just click by here. I'll get these five. Well, these four, rather. I can count. And then I can go from there, then. And then the world's your oyster, basically. You can, you can pretty much do what you want to. I'm going to quickly show you how to trade things. So there's a city by here of Poros. So I'm going to just go into Poros. And then if I go to trade, click the trade button. So these are all the things on the left-hand side this city has. An absolute junk load of stuff. We only have a few things. Say, for example, now I want to sell all this. I press two buttons, it all goes. If you're not happy with that, reset. If you want to keep stuff, press the lock button. Press it again. I sell all the junk. I get 18 out of it. Press done. Happy days. Same thing as well. If you're going to trade, you can buy stuff as well. So I have 957 coins. They have 83,000. And then I can do it by what we've got on here. So different types of horses, for example. My horse, if I hover over, it's a Sumter horse, which has 260 hit points. Well, this one by here has 210 hit points, which is slightly less, but it's much quicker. It does much more charge damage. It costs quite a bit at 950. Then a mule, I've got a mule, for example, again, speed and, and charge damage isn't as good. And they're the two things you really want, the speed and charge damage. Uh, a saddle horse, for example, which only costs 121, which isn't too bad, you'll see has slightly less hit points at 200. But it's tier 2, it does more charge, more speed, more maneuver. So getting a horse early on is good. It requires riding 10, which I actually... Do I actually have that? I do have that. So that's fine. It goes there. And my horse armor 10. But what you'll notice now, I have 110 by here. If I put the Sumter horse back over to me... My carrying weight goes up. It's always worth keeping your old horse here because your carry weight goes up as well. I can now carry quite a lot of items. So I'm happy with that. I got a better horse that does more charge damage and I was able to trade things and show you how to loot things as well. When you're on the settlement screen, for example, Poros, anybody that's in the, the town, city, village, etc. will appear here. You can quickly talk to them. If they have a blue icon by here, it means they have a quest that you can do. The quests range from all sorts of different things. From, a, For example, you can fight a rival gang. You can take an item to a certain person. It's that kind of thing. Worth doing some quests early on because you do get quite a bit of money for it. And some quests are, are, are kind of overarching. So you can do a quest for one person against another person. But the other person might offer you more money to do something bad for them and, and that sort of thing. But it's worth doing the quest if they have blue icons here. And also then you have all these different things here. It tells you about the city. So for example, Poros, level 3 walls. It shows you how prosperous it is, what kind of uh, militia they have. They have 156 people at the moment. How loyal they are to the, to the region, to the governor, etc. And the garrison, 178 garrison that's already there. How much food it produces. And, and yeah, it's just th things like that. Final thing then is the tavern. So you can go to the tavern district. I can ransom my prisoners off. Um, so I can press that. I have one prisoner. I gained five. And you can see minus one prisoner for my party. And if I visit the tavern... Because it's always nice to finish a tutorial with a nice little drink at the end. Go into a tavern and you might come across a companion. I'm hoping that we'll find someone here. I don't think we we will. But instead, we're going to go to the bar. We're going to have a nice drink. And we're going to end the tutorial here. So let's go and grab an apple, maybe. A little bit of meat. Barkeep. Give me some food. Give me some wine. I'm going to take a sit, sit down by here. I have a chat with my friends, and I'm going to end the tutorial here. I've been Dragonheart. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.